What's going on, guys? We're making to another video, and today, today is episode number two of the Schmodown show. I know I said I would have it up last Monday. I know I said I would have it up the Monday before, and it just didn't happen. It's funny though. I actually recorded an entire separate episode, edited it, was gonna upload it, had not made the thumbnail, and just didn't end up uploading it. So. This should technically be episode three, but it is episode two. But what better way to come back from a little bit of a hiatus than to talk about this absolutely insane New York event. So this was the first time I have ever actually purchased the live stream so I could watch it live. Um, and I live tweeted it. Uh, follow me at Fnatic15 if you want to see it. I'm going to be live tweeting the other live events. Um, and it was a blast. I, I just sat in my bed. I was chilling, had my iPad up, tweeting and, and looking at reactions, and it was it was like I think four-ish hours, or like two, like maybe three and a half hours of just pure schmodown fun. I was in it the entire time. I had such a great time. Um, and right off the top with that, this is a spoiler video. It's not available to the public yet, um, as far as I know. I know it's available to five dollar and up patrons. Um, but I do not believe it is up to the public yet. I think it's gonna come out this coming week. So if you've not seen it and you have not been spoiled and you do not wanna be spoiled, I am telling you right now to click off. You will not hurt my feelings. You will not offend me. I completely understand if you wanna click off right now because you have not seen it and you do not wanna be spoiled. But if you wanna be spoiled or you did watch the live stream or you were there or you are a five plus dollar patron and you want to sit here and talk about this absolutely insane New York match you're in the right place but with that being said first off thank you so much for taking the time to click on the video liking commenting subscribing all of that means the absolute world um, just, just in general if you are new just taking the time to click on the video and checking out the content really does mean the absolute world it really makes me feel good um, it shows me that there are people interested in the schmodown it shows me that there are people interested in the content and guys, that really does mean the absolute world. If you are from the Schmodown community and this is your first time watching one of my videos, first off, welcome. If you enjoy the video and you like movie reviews and you like Blu-ray collection content and all of that jazz and all of that great stuff, make sure you consider dropping a subscription down below. When we get to 400 subscribers, we are doing a giveaway. We're almost there. I think we are 15 away. So when we get there, we are going to be doing a giveaway of a 4K Ultra HD digital code to begin a movie for free. So, yes, but I think without doing any more dilly-dallying, let's just get into it. This episode is solely based on the New York event. That's all I'm talking about in this episode. Next episode, we will be talking about the Schmodown Throwdown, and we will start getting into the teams and breaking down the teams, and we'll talk about the other matches that premiere as well. Um, but today, solely because this was such a huge event and largely anticipated, and it was a great event, I am solely spending the entirety of this video talking about the New York event. So the first thing I just want to say is the whole manager controversy. Now, the, the Finstock Exchange, I said, I actually said in the video that never ended up getting posted, I said the Finstock Exchange is in deep crap. Like, they, they are in a bad situation right now with this manager stuff and and all and the whole situation i'm literally catching up on scn live episodes today um because i i binge them i don't binge them but like i listen to them when i go to sleep i listen to them in long car rides and so i've been binging them today while i've been cleaning my apartment and doing stuff like that and this is the episode where finstock calls in and makes it official that there's going to be no managers he made that official um in this episode and obviously as you know that didn't stay the case. I believe he went on to one of the Schmodown podcasts and he said, no, I'm managing Ben. John, the outlaw Roca, is managing Dan Merle. I honestly, I understand both sides. I understand both arguments. But personally, I would have gone with no managers. I mean, you're in a very difficult situation here. You don't want to show allegiance to one or the other. You want to be unified. You want your team slash faction to be unified. Let two of the best competitors in the game right now, let alone best all time, let them just go at it. They know the game. They know the game. They don't just know the trivia. So if there's a challenge, they know the challenge. If there's you know any certain decisions that need to be made, 
I would fully trust my life with Dan Merle and Ben Bateman to make the right choices on their own. I, I'm fine with the managers being there. I really am. I don't have a problem with it, but I'm saying if I was Finstock, I would have made the decision weeks in advance that there was going to be no managers to show no allegiance and let two of the best in the game fight it out. That was my personal opinion. Didn't go that way. I don't personally care because then before the match, you had some drama, some tempers flare. They they agreed that there was going to be no promos before that match. And then, of course, Bobby Gucci gets up on the mic, cuts a little promo. And then, of course, you've got John, one of the biggest egos in the game. And that's not a bad thing. I like his ego. I think it's great. You have him come up, and he cuts a promo of his own. And that I loved because that's drama. And what do we love in the Schmodown? We love drama. We love drama in the Schmodown, especially this year with these new factions and this new league type system. I love to see the drama because the Finstock Exchange is the faction I ride with. I'm telling you guys that right up front. I am I am out in front. I have always been a fan of Dan Merle. I've always been a fan of John Roca. I am now starting to, to become a fan of Ben Bateman. And I've always thought that Tom Dagnino is such a fun character. So I'm not a bandwagon. I've been watching the Schmodown for a few years now, and I've had my allegiances. Um, but yeah, I'm rocking with the Finstock Exchange, and I'm worried because I feel like they will implode. And I feel like by the end of this year, the entire um, just the Schmodown, um, the, the surface of the Schmodown, the, the overarching just the Schmodown is going to be different. I feel like personally, you're going to have champions leaving the Finstock Exchange. I think I I. I I wouldn't be surprised if the Founding Fathers are out of there by the end of the year. I wouldn't be surprised. But this is what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about the New York event, and we're going to get into the undercard first. You've got Alex Damon versus Emily Rose Jacobson. In my predictions, I had Emily Rose Jacobson taking down Alex Damon. I know that is controversial, but it wasn't a, it wasn't a Star Wars match. It was an inner geekdom match. And the, the reason why I gave Emily Rose Jacobson the edge is real simple. Alex Damon, we know he knows Star Wars. We don't know his other strengths. We don't. We know Emily Rose has some strengths. We know that we've seen her in inner geekdom matches. She's been getting better. She's been getting more questions right. She's becoming more consistent. She knows the entirety of inner geekdom. It's in her blood. So that was the reason why I gave her the slight, slight edge. I thought it was going to be a close match, and it was a close match. But I gave her the slight edge because we know Damon knows Star Wars. If he doesn't land on Star Wars with the wheel, what is his strength? What do we know? Obviously, though, Damon took it. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised at all. Because, again, Damon is a great Schmodown competitor. He knows the game very well. And he obviously studied his butt off. And he has a great manager like Roxy Stryer who is on him all the time to study. They're always communicating. They're always talking. Roxy is one of the best managers in the league in terms of actually coaching up her players. I think she is bar none the best manager for coaching up players. I really truly believe that. Now, that's from coming from just seeing the managers that are coming from last year into this year. I haven't really seen much of any of the other managers. Kate is funny, but she's more of a character. And you've got Koi, who I think could be a fantastic, absolutely phenomenal manager. I think he's going to be great. But he's only had like a, one match so far, so he has a look. He has to prove himself a little bit more to me. So yeah, Alex Damon came out with the win. Not too surprising at all. Uh, I'm happy for him. The Rock Stars are one to know. First match of the season. Uh, I believe that was the first loss of this season for the Finstock Exchange. I could be completely wrong. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think that is the first loss of the season for the Finstock Exchange. But. That wouldn't be the last loss because we have the title match. The singles title match is the next match that we're going to talk about. You have Ben, the boss, Bateman facing off against dangerous Dan Merle. And it was built up to be one of the greatest matches in Schmodown history. And my gosh, was it. It was by far one of, if not the best Schmodown matches in the history of the Schmodown. You broke the overall points record. You had the overall, like, you, like the, for the overall match, the amount of points scored by both players, you broke that record, I believe. I was reading the stats today. Um, you have Dan bringing home the singles points record. And 
you go all the way down to sudden death. This this game went down to sudden death. You've got a five point, you've got a five round game that is going back and forth. So you start off in the first round. Merle gets a perfect round. That's huge. Let me pull up the Twitter thread just so that I can really, really um, say it. So Dan Merle starts out with a perfect round and he gets the bonus, I believe. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think he probably did get the bonus. And he had a three point lead over Ben Bateman going into round two. That first off was a huge advantage. Oh, and before we like get more into it, I had, uh, I had Dan taking home the title. I thought it was going to be the match, a match of the ages. I, I did. And I thought either could take it home. But in my personal opinion, I thought it was going to be uh, be Dan Merle. Perfect round for Dan Merle. He takes a three-point lead. We get into the wheel round. Uh, Bateman takes it, and he spins Nora Ephron movies. Uh, new category. I, I didn't know um, a lot about that. But Bateman scores a perfect round, too. So that is a huge momentum twist. Um, then Merle spins Anne Hathaway movies, and he goes with it. And I, I said, I, I said... It's an interesting take. I assumed it was to avoid, you know, uh, opponent's choice. But he kept a one-point lead going into round three, which was the betting round. So he was still up by one point. He did lose two points of the lead, still up by a point. That is as close as you can get. Like, it's absolutely insane. So we went in... Um, we go into the betting round. You got Ben spinning and, or no, Dan spins. I apologize. Dan spins. It's opponent's choice. I mean, come on. So Bateman picks Tyler Perry movies. And with that, Bateman bets three points on Tyler Perry. Dan bets zero points. Bateman gets it and gets the lead and is absolutely fired up. This was a big turning point. I thought this was a huge turning point in the match because when Bateman got this, he got out of his and he was just fired up. I was I was like that was absolutely insane. Um, and and Dan Dan was down. Bateman took the lead for the first time. Um, and then we had then we had the um, what do you call it the buzzer round. Bateman gets all five questions. Like he buzzes in for all five questions, gets four of them right and misses one of them. Five point lead for Bateman going into the final round. Going into the final round. Merle had to hit his two and three pointers to even have Bateman, to even have Bateman go. And he did. And then Bateman hit his two and Merle had to hit his five. Merle hit his five. Like, this is the most intense, like, this was the most intense thing. Bateman hits his three, tied ball game, missed his five. So we went into sudden death. Went into sudden death. They each get the first question right. Second question, Dan Merle takes it home, and he is the brand new singles champion. I could not have asked for a better, a better match like that was it was insane i i gotta give credit to ben he kicked butt like he he destroyed in that match dan just happened to play better i mean there there was no big mistake on either side i think each team made each player made very specific decisions for very specific scenarios that were that were important and that swung the game Dan betting zero points in the betting round because he knew he wouldn't know the or he he was fairly confident he would not know the answer to the question was huge because he didn't lose any points. If he would have bet a point and lost the point, that game as close as it was there, that game's over. Big decision. So we walk out. Dan Merle is the new champion. Guys, let me know down below what you think. Do you think Dan deserved it? I mean, I personally do. I had him winning. I don't like I feel bad for Ben, but I know he's gonna be back. I believe he is still technically the number one contender. So he will be back. He will. I, I don't you know, I, I I I he is one of the best players in the game right now, both strategy wise and trivia wise, one of the best players in the game. He will be back. 
everything else shouldn't worry about it and it was one heck of a match i cannot wait for anyone that hasn't seen it to see it it's got to come out within the next week or so i'm very much looking forward to watching it again it is an instant classic and guys you got to check it out when it comes out but guys that's pretty much it again let me know down in the comments below what did you think of the matches what did you think of this insane singles title match? It was absolutely insane. The event looked wild, it looked crazy. The promos were awesome. Everything was awesome. The hype videos were great. It was all put together so, so well. Credit to Christian, Mark, everyone involved. It was awesome. But guys, that's pretty much it. Let me know down in the comments below again, what did you think of the matches? Did you have a good time? I personally did. I personally thought it was a heck of a good time. But guys. That is pretty much it. Thanks so much for taking the time to click on the video, like, and comment, and subscribe. And all of that means the absolute world. But guys, that is pretty much it. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you in the next video.